Andremo dai che ti sei la piso, la piso? Ne, ne, ne. la piso? So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose bold stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, all oh, the ramparts we watched were so gay. Thank you to the Marine Security Guard Detachment for Embassy Nicosia. It is now my honor to invite Ms. Judith Garber, Ambassador of the United States to the Republic of Cyprus, to deliver her remarks. Madam Ambassador. Mr. President, Madam Speaker, Ministers, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, Friends. Good evening, welcome, Kalasurisite, Hoshkeldenes, and thank you all for joining us here tonight to celebrate the 245th anniversary of America's Declaration of Independence. I particularly want to thank the President and members of the government for taking the time to be with us tonight so soon after the devastating fires in the Larnaca and Limassol regions. Our hearts go out to the friends and families of those who perished and to all who lost their homes and so many belongings. I wish also to thank all the first responders who worked to contain the fire from Cyprus, the United Kingdom, Greece, and Israel. We often call July 4th America's birthday. In truth, when our Continental Congress voted for independence and ratified the Declaration of Independence on July 4, 1776, it was a crucial step in the process of our nation's birth, but it was neither the first step nor the last. The process of gaining our independence began much earlier and didn't end until the Treaty of Paris was signed in 1783. Just as the original 4th of July came about as a result of many prior victories, the celebration of tonight of our strong bilateral relationship is based on more than 60 years of US-Cyprus friendship and the milestones we have achieved during that time. 2021 also marks the 60th anniversary of the inauguration of President Kennedy. 60 years on, President Kennedy continues to be a symbol to Americans and others around the world of youthful energy, positivity, and optimism. He was the youngest person ever elected to the US presidency. He inspired a generation. One of President Kennedy's signature programs was the Peace Corps, 
which 60 years later still gives Americans the opportunity to immerse themselves in a new culture and provide services to people in need. The Peace Corps sent almost a quarter of a million volunteers to 142 countries, including a team to Cyprus in 1962. The Peace Corps remains a symbol of American generosity and an ongoing memorial to the vision of its founding president. John Kennedy also inspired a generation of scientists, mathematicians, and engineers with his dreams of spaceflight. President Kennedy is also admired for his dedication to improving civil rights and race relations in the United States. These are just some of the reasons President Kennedy still inspires Americans today, despite his tragically short time in office. President Kennedy has also been admired by the people of Cyprus. Kennedy was campaigning for office when the modern state of Cyprus was created and was president during its formative years. In preparing for this year's celebration of American independence, we did a little research about Cypriot tributes to Kennedy. I am sure many of you have visited Kennedy Street here in Nicosia or in Limassol, but we learn that there are at least 17 different streets and squares across the island named after our 35th president. Once we discovered that, we knew there was no better theme for celebrating American Cypriot cooperation and displaying our optimism for the future of our relations with Cyprus than by marking the anniversary of his inauguration. Over the last year and a half, through lockdowns, restrictions, PCR tests, and vaccines, we have all drawn on our Kennedy-esque belief that better days lie ahead and that hard work, cooperation, and putting our faith and resources in science and technology would lead to a better future. The people of Cyprus have done a remarkable job of protecting themselves and all of us who live here from the worst effects of the coronavirus. The United States was proud to support these efforts through multiple donations of medical supplies and equipment to the Republic of Cyprus. Throughout this pandemic year, we were able to maintain the momentum building in our relationship. For the first time, we sent members of the Republic of Cyprus National Guard to the United States to study at our defense schools, funded by the International Military Education and Training Program. We announced the waiver of some defense trade restrictions last summer. Allowing the purchase of non-lethal equipment will help protect the people of this island against transnational threats and strengthen our security and commercial ties. In the economic and commercial arena, our countries have continued to find ways to build on our strong trade and investment ties. The United States recognizes the right of the Republic of Cyprus to develop the resources in its exclusive economic zone and believes the island's oil and gas resources should be shared equitably between both communities. We are proud that two of our leading energy companies continue to invest in Cyprus as a partner in the development of Cyprus's natural gas. The U.S. investment management firm PIMCO has made major new investments in the Cypriot financial sector. And U.S. companies are increasingly pursuing and winning projects here in Cyprus, such as conduit for traffic cameras and TCI for spectrum monitoring. These deals are the foundation on which business investments are made. We have also seen a significant increase in the number of young Cypriot students applying to American universities and colleges. This year, Cypriots have earned more than $3 million in scholarships to U.S. colleges and universities. This past year, we saw a number of high-level visits to the island, including two cabinet secretaries and two undersecretaries, advancing our foreign policy discussions and cooperation on issues ranging from security to immigration and travel. We broke ground for the Cyclops Center, a US-funded regional training facility for countries in the Eastern Mediterranean and beyond, seeking to promote security on land, at sea, and in port. Importantly, we strongly supported the efforts facilitated by the United Nations to resume formal negotiations for settling the Cyprus problem. In the same spirit of optimism that characterized the Kennedy administration, the Biden administration is committed to supporting a a Cypriot-led, UN-facilitated effort to reuni reunify Cyprus as a bi-zonal, bi-communal federation. President Biden remains convinced not only that a solution is possible, but that a reunited island would benefit all Cypriots and the wider region. In one of his last public proclamations, President John Kennedy wrote, 
As we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live them. I want to express my gratitude for everything that our partners across the island in government, civil society, and the business community have done over the last year to deepen the partnership between the United States and Cyprus. Thela na ekfraso tin evgono sini mu ya ola osa ehun kani ton telateo chrono i sinergates mas so olo clero tonisi stin cavernisi tin kononia ton politon katin epihirimatiki kinotita yana envathinun ti sinergasia metaxi tin ino menon polition katin kipru. Adada hukumet civil toplum the ish dunya sundaki or takla romazan America birlishek de vetleri the kupras or syndakaki or takla derin lestirmek ichin getcht imiz yilda yap taklara herche minetarum. As we continue to move towards a post-pandemic world, I'm looking forward to even more cultural, political, and economic security engagement. Molis echome archisi ke iparhum poli perisotera pu borume nakaname mazi. Daha yene bashliorus vebilikte yaba bile j imis birchok shevar. We are just getting started and there is so much more we can do together. Mr. President, I'd like to invite you to say a few words. Your Excellency Ambassador Garber, distinguished friends, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to join you on the occasion of the 245th anniversary of the independence of the United States of America. In 1776, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, George Washington, and other founding fathers signed the Declaration of Independence, which structured democratic governance and left a legacy that has shaped the world. A legacy based on the ideals that everyone is equal and endowed with inherent rights, such as liberty, the consent, of the governed and resistance to any form of tyranny or despotism. Ideals which, in conjunction with the bravery and courage of the founding fathers, inspired numerous movements that followed thereafter in pursuit of freedom and independence. The declarations of forced ideals and values even more relevant and necessary in today's ever-changing world have withstood the test of time, not only as the essential tenets of democracy, but also as fundamental principle of international relations and of the United Nations doctrine. The right for the people to be able to freely dictate their fate within their nation without external interventions. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I am extremely pleased to note that during these past few years, Relations between Cyprus and the United States are constantly enhancing through tangible deliverables, such as uh, the Eastern Mediterranean Security and Energy Partnership Act, which establishes the institutional framework for energy and security cooperation between the United States of America and the Republic of Cyprus, Greece and Israel an act uh, through which the United States also partially lifted its arm embargo on Cyprus. At the same time, a notable development is the investment in Cyclops, an excellent regional training center, which brings together, or closer together, the United States and other partners aimed at providing training and exercise in crucial security fields. The above-mentioned initiatives are already yielding concrete results and mutual benefits for both our countries 
as well as for key allies in the Eastern Mediterranean. At the same time, special emphasis is also placed on our joint commitment and close cooperation in the fight against terrorism, human and drug trafficking, maritime security, and cybersecurity. Ladies and gentlemen, as you are aware, Cyprus is an active partner in a number of positive developments that have been unfolding in our broad region, including through the establishment of numerous trilateral mechanisms of cooperation with the aim to foster regional predictability and stability. In this respect, I would like to highlight the significance we attach on the United States support on these uh, synergies, in particular through the 3 plus 1 platform we have established with Greece and Israel and the U.S. participation as an observer in the East Met Gas Forum. I also wish to point out that these cooperation mechanisms are open to any stakeholder thus, that has a common set of values in respect of uh, a rules-based code of conduct between sovereign states and in line with international law, including the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea. To this end, we fully share the United States' position that any disputes in the Eastern Mediterranean as regards energy matters should be resolved through dialogue and not by gunboat diplomacy, as well as that Turkey should refrain from any illegal actions within our exclusive economic zone in full support to the unhindered exercise of our sovereign rights to explore and exploit our natural resources. Distinguished friends, sharing their vision and taking inspiration from the founding fathers of the United States, we recall once again the Declaration's ideals of freedom and justice in our efforts to reach a comprehensive and lasting settlement on the Cyprus issue. This effort, most prominently envisaged in ending the unacceptable status quo caused by the illegal Turkish Acts, Acts in 1974, aims to ensure the peaceful coexistence and prosperous collaboration between Greek and Turkish Cypriots. Taking this opportunity, I would like to underline my deep appreciation for the continuous U.S. support in reaching a settlement that would reunite Cyprus on the agreed basis of a bizonal, bicommunal federation in line with the UN Security Council resolutions. A position which was reiterated by President Biden through his letter of May 28th of this year, a support of, of utmost importance against the backdrop of the position of both Turkey and our compatriots, the Turkish Cypriot leadership, for a two-state solution. President Biden also expressed his serious concerns with regard to Turkey's decision to reopen a part of Varosha, stressing that uh, they have urged and will continue to urge a reversal of this decision and will discourage further provocative actions. In this regard, in view of the upcoming illegal visit of the Turkish president to the northern part of the island or the occupied areas on the 20th of July and uh, the threats he has put forward, I urge the numerous heads of diplomatic missions present today to convey to your governments to impress upon President Erdogan the need to refrain from inflaming further tensions through any illegal actions, particularly as regards Varosh. If Turkey proceeds with such actions, and I repeat, particularly in relation to Varosha, this will be the tombstone of not only resuming the negotiation process, the negotiating process, but, uh, and most importantly, to reaching 
a viable and functional settlement. That is why, in a constructive manner, and with sheer political will to diffuse tensions, I submitted a proposal for the adoption of bold, confident building measures that could prove to be a game changer in addressing concerns of both sides. Measures which can address in an equitable and legally robust manner all the issues related with Varosha, including its port, the illegal airport at the northern part of the island, the additional protocol, as well as the exploitation of hydrocarbons. Excellencies, Ambassador Garber, the Turkish positions expressed in Geneva, regrettably, did not allow the Secretary General to move forward towards the resumption of the peace process, despite our efforts to achieve a breakthrough that would permit, once again, substantial negotiations to take place on the agreed basis and from where they left off in Grand Montana. In the face of this setback, I would like to yet again reiterate in the strongest manner my commitment to immediate engage in a new creative and meaningful dialogue in full respect of the UN Security Council resolutions or parameters provided that the necessary conditions are in place and all stakeholders involved abstain from any illegal activities. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, in thanking once again Judith and Paul for hosting us tonight, I ask you to raise your glass. I have a water. We're going to get you something besides And join me in a, a toast to the enduring friendship and the strategic ties between the Republic of Cyprus and the United States of America.